Yeah, hi. So um, I will repeat because I forgot to, to start the recording. Uh, um, I'm talking about the assignments and the project being a little bit open-ended and not having kind of a, a clear end to what constitutes a project completely done or assignment completely done. It, it kind of um, presents an option for variations for uh, doing different things slightly differently. So the, the, the best example is assignment two. Um, assignment two is flexible and it kind of allows um, experimentation, experimentation and exploration, exploration. And um, uh, some of you, like that's what we had last week. We had the BPROG one, uh, two and three different variations of how things can be done. Uh, and what does it mean to do kind of a concatenative uh, language? And that's, that is the point. The point is not to look something up and do it. The point is to think about it and experiment with it, right? And that, I, I know it is hard and I know it is something that um, it's a little bit unusual, but it is something that we as programmers have to deal constantly with. So if you're working, like if you have a client and you're working on something, the client usually tells you something that is quite big, uh, you know, relatively ill-specified. And then it is your role to decompose it into kind of a building blocks into small parts and identify what is easy, what is hard and where to start. What is the kind of the minimum viable demonstration of what you need to do? Uh, and that skill you, you kind of need to develop. So, you know, in a semester one and two, and even semester three, we were doing uh, more well-specified chunks, which are kind of uh, easy to grasp and easy to do. Semester four, five, and six are kind of more hard. they more open-ended and they require you to kind of decompose problems yourself, especially a bachelor project. Right, so you kind of building your skills up to be able to tackle a relatively large, you know, uh, half a year development project, which is um, quite big. And then you do need to decompose it and start somewhere such that you can build up the skills. Right. Um, so this um, this ability to decompose decompose a large uh, task into smaller tasks is is hard and the course is trying to um to force you to do that like to to try to start where you feel you can and then kind of push your own boundary um so that also leads me to the to the uh, third um suggestion that it is uh, a little bit hard um so so programmers differ um some people are uh, really skilled and really easy to uh, to grasp new concepts, some don't. Uh, and the difference is huge. So the, the difference in the industry is reportedly, you know, often 20 times. So if you're working in a team, in a company, and I mentioned that early in the course, uh, there will be people who are doing a task in one hour, and then another person will need 20 hours to achieve exact, to do the same task, right? Um, and th that is a kind of an average, right? Uh, you, you can have uh, differences which are larger than that. Um, I worked with, um, uh, with some engineers in, in sound microsystems a uh, couple of years ago, and they said they, they've seen uh, you know, uh, differences up to 100, right? So they had uh, team members which could achieve something in one hour and then you know that uh, that everybody else would need hundred times more to to do that the same task. So what does it mean to you? Well, it kind of means that you need to check where you are on the spectrum, right? So um, if you are um, if you are sort of an average person, then it means there will be people kind of doing stuff maybe you know twice, three times slower than you. And there will be people doing things kind of, uh, you know, two or three times faster than you. And some will be doing things 10 times faster than you, right? Um, so the difference between productivity and ability to do something is huge. Uh, so if, if an average student works in the course, you know, 50 hours, it would not be a surprise that a, a, a struggling student would have to work 500 hours, right? That, that's, that is not a surprise. That, that's kind of the industry norm, right? 
Um, so of course, the, the person who struggles cannot do uh, the same task as that person, right? So if you have two people and one is kind of a person type A and the other is person type B, obviously the person type B cannot do in the course the same amount of work that person type A can do. Uh, that's just th the way it is, right? Uh, so the person type B will do less, will do something, I don't know, of, of 100 hours, and that will be a fraction of the, of the person A um, work. And that's fine. That's normal. Like that, there is nothing unusual about it. And that, that also means that this course is kind of flexible. It allows people of, of, of different skill levels to sort of upskill themselves. And it's not, um, and that, th that's another point that it's not, um, it's not the absolute uh, destination that matters is the differential, right? So if you, um, it's kind of leveling up what, what matters. So you kind of have a semester and you're starting at a certain level. So, you know, you have some base baseline and then you're using the time to kind of upskill uh, and the upskilling kind of matters. And that's why the portfolio is kind of not graded um, like, you know, assignment one, assignment two and project are not graded kind of linearly. They, they are kind of graded as a portfolio and they kind of check how much progress you've made. Like what is the difference between you at the beginning of the semester and that, you know, where you are at the end of the semester. Um, so the, um, the, the progression is kind of important, but that requires, yeah, back again, kind of a self-work um, and, um, self-work, self-study. Uh, and that's, that's what programming is. Like programming is always to be looking things up and doing your own um, kind of learning. So that is, um, that, and, and this is hard, right? All right, so th there is one more thing. Um, I don't want to rant for too long. Um, there, there are different strategies where we do kind of quick problem solving. So, um, I, I give you a task uh, that that could be like an exam task. Okay, uh, so for example, I I say okay, we have a string, so there is a string, uh, hello world, and I don't know, um, and hello Norway. Okay, right. So we have a string, and we are given a string and given a delimiter. Um, so given a string and a delimiter. So let's say the limiter is space and the, the string is this. Um, write a program that splits the string into parts, All right? So in this case, the uh, the parts would be hello world with comma and hello again and Norway. All right, so that would be the sort of the output that we would expect. Uh, if I change the delimiter, so if the delimiter Okay, so let's say delim. If the delim is comma, then the output would be uh, hello world. Then there is comma, and then we have space and hello Norway, right? So I would have two tokens because I only have comma kind of here. And then I'm not delimiting by space. So that space would become part of the second token, right? So the question is, uh, how would you do that, right? And uh, if if the delimiter is space, right? Uh, white space, that's trivial. Uh, you have split function, you have words function, uh, in Haskell split in, uh, in Rust, you can kind of uh, Google it and you can kind of easily do that, right? So for a single delimiter, that's fine. 
uh, for, for the white space delimiter. Uh, if the delimiter is something else, um, then first of all, there is a question, okay? First question is, is it a string or is it a character, right? Character. So what is the delimiter? Uh, is the delimiter a single character or can a delimiter be a string? Or if it is a string, it means that the delimiters are the individual characters or does it mean that the whole string is the delimiter, right? How can you Google that? Like, how can you Google this thinking about what is the nature of the problem? You can't, you, you basically have to think, right? So like, you can't find this on, Google, on Stack Overflow and you, you can't even formulate a question to Google about it because it's something that is kind of uh, in, the, in the problem itself, right? And, and we will have kind of issues like that in the exam where you, you can't really, you know, Google the, the question and, and try to find an answer because the answer requires you to think, right? And here you have, you have multiple options, right? So a delimiter um, can be uh, just a single character, right? So if, if a single character like X or a single character like space is a delimiter, then I will have um, different tokens of my string then if I have a delimiter, which is so, so if I have, uh, let's say the delimiter is the uh, comma or a space. And we kind of showed here, what would the output be in, in those two cases, right? Uh, so the, the, the limiter is a single character or a single character. So now the delimiter can be a string um, and the string is composed of single characters. And each of those characters is kind of a delimiter, right? So I could have, I could say I have a delimiter like this, and it means both comma and space are delimiters, right? So then what would be the answer? Like what would be the, the tokens that we have? So we would have hello, uh, we would have um, world, and then we have a delimiter, which is the comma. Um, so comma is not part of the, of the token because it is a delimiter. Then we have a space. So now we have kind of a, uh, a comma and the space, and then we have a null string in, in, in between, right? So if I say, okay, how many different tokens do I have? Then I have to ask a question, okay, what do I do with the empty, empty tokens? Do I ignore them or do I report them, right? So one solution is that you, we, you kind of report an empty token, which is between the, the comma and the space, which are both the limiters, but you don't have anything in, in between, right? Uh, or that's, and, and then you carry on with, with the processing, or you have uh, hello world, and then you ignore the middle, right? So if there is a, a null token between the two delimiters, you just say, okay, I mean, if it's empty, I, I don't care, right? And then you would have end. Right, so here you would have and here, and then you would have hello. Here you would have and and hello, right? And you kind of ignored the middle the middle part, right? Why does it matter? Well, it, it matters. It matters a lot because if I have um, if if I have comma separated value file, right, and I have a line which is like this, um, let's say. Marius uh, 40, um, I don't know, NTNU. And then I'm processing line, line by line and I'm producing kind of uh, the, uh, the tokens. So uh, let's, let's shorten it so I have less typing. So I would have something like M um, 40, 40 and n um, for this line. And then if I have another line, which is like a comma comma b, then I would expect that I would have a empty I and um, b, right? Because I 
like if my comma separated values are kind of separated by by uh, my by my uh, separator, and my separator again is um, is both uh, comma and space then I have kind of a three tokens here and I would expect three tokens here with the middle one being an empty empty token, right? So this decision, what you do with empty things and this decision, how you're dealing with the delimiter uh, kind of matters. And, and there is a final one. Uh, so a delimit can be a string, but it is not. Um, so here it is. Um, collection of individual delimiters, right? So here I have two delimiters, which is a comma and a space. And here I have a um, single string delime delimiter, right? So if I say my delimiter is comma space, right? Uh, then it kind of is a difference between this being the delimiter and here being no delimiters because I don't have a comma space uh, anywhere in my string, right? So here, if I do that, I have um, this, just one token. And here I have three tokens, right? Uh, because the I have one delimiter and I have another delimiter. You get the point? So, and it's not that the stakeholder will tell you all of this. This is not the stakeholder uh, task to understand that this simple problem of giving a string and a delimiter uh, produce the tokens. Uh, all this nuance, all this kind of questions and all these uh, assumptions are kind of your task. That, that's what you need to do. You need to ask, okay, what does it mean? And then if it's an open-ended pro problem, you may need to make certain assumptions, right? So you may say, okay, uh, that's what programming languages uh, designers do. Like they make assumptions, what is the API and how does it work? Most of the time uh, when they do this, they mean the, the, uh, the middle, right? So they will accept a string as the delimiter and they the collection of those uh, talk, um, those individual characters are treated as uh, delimiters, but um, it kind of varies. For example, with the case of white space, usually we don't want, um, like if I have, so again, let's do this here. If I have a string which says, uh, hello, space, space world, right? How many tokens? If I'm doing um, if I'm doing split with space, uh, how many tokens should I get back? Should that should I get back two tokens, which is this one and this one, or should I get three tokens with the middle being the empty empty token because th there is a delimiter and there is a delimiter, but there is kind of nothing in between the two delimiters. So the answer is okay. You could get two, or you could get three, um, or three. Right uh, with the with the middle um, being empty, an empty token. So again, if we're dealing with kind of like CSV-like processing where the 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 space is being kind of used as a separator, then maybe it matters. Maybe we need to return three. It's kind of a niche um, dilemma, right? Usually, most implementations will do this. So the default Rust and Haskell implementations basically do this. They kind of uh, don't report the empty tokens between the white space separators because most of the time it doesn't make sense. But you could imagine a comma separated value file where instead of comma, you did use a space as a delimiter. And then you may want to be to, to know that the, there is an empty thing here, right? Okay, so that, that is kind of a long rant, but what, what, I, what it is all about is that this thing is non, not Googleable. You can't Google it, right? You just have to sit and think about it. You have to sit and check, okay, how is Haskell doing it? How is Rust doing it? What does it mean? What does it mean to have a string delimiter? What do I really want to do? Do I want to get um, the, um, the, the empty values out of my processing or not? And so on. And this is like, again, this is hard. Because this requires thinking. This requires kind of application of what you already have in your kind of a programming workshop, in your programming kind of head. 
uh, and think about the problem in such a way that it sort of makes sense. And some of you are doing that. Some of you did great, like with the assignment two. Um, but some people are still in the mindset that you can basically Google for a solution and just um, do it, right? Like uh, from uh, finding the solution. And in theory, maybe, maybe it, there is a query that you could do on Google to kind of do this analysis of, of, of this small problem of a parsing uh, string into tokens. Um, but I, have, I don't know. Uh, I, I, this problem is not new. I mean, this, this problem is often used as a job interview question, right? So, uh, you know, um, given a string, uh, so you, you, you know, given a, a string and given the delimiter, you need to produce the, the list of uh, tokens. That is often a kind of a, an interview question. And then you are expected to write a program which will do that. Uh, and, you not, and you are expected to not use words or split uh, you are kind of expected to write your own words function, right? Um, so in Haskell, you've used words to uh, split the string into um, into individual tokens. Uh, but if if I tell you, okay, uh, we have a string, there is white space there, and I don't care if there is one or multiple, and I want those three tokens, right? So I want to get this uh, list of, uh, I don't want to type this, A, B, C, couple of spaces D, and I want to get uh, A, B, C, and D, right? Can you write a function which does that yourself instead of using words, right? Uh, well, you should be able to. It's a kind of a simple loop. Uh, you kind of uh, concatenating the you know the string until you hit the delimiter. Uh, then whatever you got so far becomes kind of the 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 item of your list. Then you continue like you continue ignoring the delimiter. Then you hit something that is not the delimiter. You start building the string and so on, right? So you can write it and go in a kind of a very a functional uh, in a very uh, uh, loop-based way with kind of ma maintaining the state. Or you can think, oh yeah, I can probably try to do that with, uh, with a list in a kind of a recursive way. Um, but you do need to kind of uh, maintain sort of a state of whether you hit the delimiter yet or not. Um, and then if you hit the delimiter, you kind of recursively process the next token and kind of ignore the, the delimiter, ignore, ignore, okay. Now I'm kind of building the next token, okay. I stopped building the next token that becomes the kind of the element of my output list and so on, right? So you can kind of do it in a recursive way or you can do it in a for loop. Uh, most people in an imperative world would just use a loop uh, and iterate over the, the characters of the, of the string. Um, yeah, th there are, there is of course some nuance because of of U two. I I didn't talk about it like of UTF eight. Uh, you know the you know what does it mean iterating over a string? Like is it byte by byte, byte or is it uh you know uh rune by rune? Like depending which language you deal with, you have to deal with UTF strings, which are sort of the characters are not individual bytes. But that's like separate issue. We we I I like let's call it kind of the advanced topic, right? Um, th th that will not be in the exam, um, not be in the exam. Uh, although if you were to use um, something like um, Golang or, or C++ or Rust, uh, you, you do need to somehow deal with the, um, with the iteration of the string such that, you know, you iterating over the characters. Um, similar, yeah, I mean, similar in Haskell, but that, yeah, I, I don't want to go into, into the nuances of this. I, 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 let's say this is just ASCII. It's not a UTF-8, right? Um, anyway, um, that was kind of a long, uh, longish rant again about like thinking about like decomposing problem into smaller chunks and then trying to solve it like, okay, uh, one thing at the time. So if you're giving a task, which, is, which seems kind of hard, there are always things that it can be decomposed into, and then you can deal with that. Uh, if that is too hard, you can further decompose it into something even smaller and deal with that, right? So uh, here, like 
this is the big problem. Like where you start? Well, you need to iterate over characters, right? So you need some form of like being able to iterate over characters. So maybe printing character by character is your first step. So you don't even are uh, doing anything yet useful. You're just kind of building the machinery for you to be able to solve it. Um, and this, this is kind of important. All right, so uh, I wanted to kind of highlight some of the, like, again, some of the things kind of uh, for where we wanted the course to go, like, and what you, we wanted to explore. Uh, and the main point is to focus on kind of on thinking, like, it's not, as I, as I said, destination is not the, the goal. Uh, the goal is the journey, like how you arrived at, at where you arrived. Um, and um, yeah, so, so one more thing, um, there is a code examples. Uh, so code examples in the course, uh, examples in the repo and the course repo are the first thing to check. So you can Google for similar problems online, but usually the online solutions are slightly, have slightly different focus. And they are doing things, you know, for a different reason, or they are very similar, but it's kind of a little bit different objective. And then you get sort of sidetracked. Um, that's what happened with the assignment too for most people, because most online resources talk about like the, the focus is on actually building a proper parser for the for the language, which was totally not the case in, in our in our situation. And our situation was just. Uh, to deal with the with managing the state, right? We could have used like different uh, domain, and the the logic and the program would be kind of the same. Uh, we used this sort of interpretation because we had the calculator, uh, the very simple calculator, and it was kind of easy to build on top of that. Again, like if you look online for most of the calculators, they will be different. They will kind of try to solve different problems. Uh, we kind of constrain it to a very trivial case. Um, and the whole point of exercise two was sort of dealing with the type system and with the with managing the state. Uh, it had not really anything to do with proper parsing and with proper writing kind of um, uh, abstract syntax tree walkers and, and interpreters, even though it could be kind of do, done this way. And some of you did, did, did it this way, right? Um, and that's what I, I told, told about this kind of a differences of, you know, between people. It's, it's easier to do something smaller, which you can manage than to try to, to, to tackle something much larger than you can't tackle yet. Um, it, it is a process. So start where you can. Um, and the same for the projects. Like you can, um, you can do projects, you know, re reasonably uh, small or very small, or you can go a little bit beyond if you manage to, to have the, the basics sorted, right? So it's kind of up to you. All right, so I will stop. Uh, I will stop ranting about this, and I um, I will open uh, for questions. I will stop recording as well, so all the questions are kind of off the record. If you want to chat.